everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint this gorgeous, fun arrow, this bohemian arrow for Southwest Art Week. We're kicking off Southwest Art Week. How you doing, John? John is my husband. He tracks me with cameras. We have several of them, yeah, including palette okay. cams, and he follows me around to make sure that you're part of every bit of the painting action so you can paint along at home live if you want to. That's how much fun we have here. If you're not familiar, on the TAS webpage, you'll see down in the description below about materials and all that, and of course a traceable will be information including, in case you don't live in the United States, what is Southwest Art? Mm. <laughs> and why are we painting it all week? Hey, let's get started. Oh Mr. yeah, we're ready, ready to jump right into it. I'm yes, we are. I'm gonna jump in to this whole painting. I've got a nine by 12 canvas board well, that's so far back, I'm never going to be able to see or paint from it. <laughs> <laughs> you moved my easel way back. I did not mean to. No, not that, that, that back. It's way back. Okay. So I have a 9 by 12 canvas here, canvas board. It's not. Uh, it's just ready to go, ready to paint. Over here, I have acrylic colors because I find that helps me paint. I have titanium white, yellow ochre, uh, quinacridone magenta, cad red light, thalo blue, thalo green, cad yellow medium, Burnt Sienna and Mars Black. I'm also going to be using a mister today because it's super hot in my studio. And I'm only going to put one wish on the canvas. Oh, yeah? What's that one wish? And that is everyone in the path of all this crazy weather and all these disasters is safe. Oh, yeah. That's a good thing to put in there. I'm just wishing my friends, you know, because we've got, we have personal friends right now. I have family members and friends right now in the path of this. So, yeah, definitely just, wishing that everyone is some, safe. Some and Sherpa team our... down there in Florida, too. Hmm? Some of our Sherpa team is down there in Florida. Sherpa yeah. team is down there. My uh, family members down there. And, of course, we have Melody Lane and Monish of Craft Clutch. Our... Yeah, a lot of our, 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 yeah. Our, our YouTuber friends, too. So, it's a scary time. That being said, let's art. Let's art. Let's art. Let's come together in art. I have a number 30 bright but mm -hmm. basically what I'm looking for here is a nice big wide brush for this first layer. I'm going to get this wet, dip this brush in water and drag off the extra water and I'm going to mix together a little of my yellow ochre right, mm -hmm. and my white and I'm going to thoroughly mix these together. So what I mean by that is that I want the color to be pretty uniform for this first background color and I'm going to come and get a smidge, which in my assessment is always just a, that small amount of black. It's just a tiny amount. Think of it as like chili pepper. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're going to just get this in here, a nice thorough mixing. And we're going to paint this whole canvas, this aged parchment. I'm going to call this color today aged parchment. Aged parchment. I like it. So I'm just working this out. You can see me brushing back and forth kind of use, loosely in a painterly style. I've dipped in my water. I only dip to just the tip of the bristles because while I want water to improve flow, I don't want so much that my brush soaks out and the paint gets too wet and then doesn't bind well to the canvas. So see, this is actually the fun part, man. We're just, this is almost like if you've ever bought a ream of parchment paper, this is the color. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with this because our wedding invitations were on parchment paper. That was really cool. That was really cool. And I, I hand aged, what was it, 200 of them, 500 we, of them? We torched the was. edges, and that was probably the only questionable idea because then they all smelled slightly of burnt paper. <laughs> they did, plus your mom's kitchen was smoked out. Yeah, we, we had smoked the house <laughs> out. At least yeah. she's up for a project, right? Yeah. One thing you got to say, see up for a project. So I'm just, see how this is a very smooth initial mixture. It almost looks like it's still white. You must be going like, did we actually do anything? Yes, you did. And this is an important part for this painting because this is going to let us age this out. The next really important part is that we're going to dry it because acrylic paint is either blending one into wet or dry brushing. The next step is dry brushing. Key to that is everything needs to be dry. So let me draw my canvas and John, you say hi to everybody. Okay. How are you guys doing? So I'll be go shh. And while she's doing that, I will find out. I think that over here somewhere I can give her some bubbles because she generally likes bubbles. So, oh, yeah, as soon as I turn them on, she likes that. So thank you guys for coming. we got a really nice crowd of people here today to join us for this nice Bohemia Arrow. And 
you know, so it's uh, lovely to see you guys. We had so many wonderful paintings coming up this week. I've seen all of them. I will go up and <laughs> I will go up and, uh, uh, and and check all out some of these arrowheads now too. <laughs> now that I'm getting her with the bubbles, so. Uh, but yeah, I want to check out these arrowheads. There's been a lot of really great still lifes from Still Life Week. That was really amazing. I'm really glad to see you guys all here for doing this Southwest stuff. This is pretty exciting. And for those of you guys who are so, uh, who are unfamiliar with the Southwest, uh, Southwest art refers to uh, a genre of art that comes from the Southwest area of the United States that largely focuses on uh, Old West and Native American style uh, influences within our art, 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 art styles. And I think that this really sort of pick, picked up steam in what, the late 40s, early 50s? But the, my favorite part of it was in the 80s. Yeah. As it, as it late seventies and eighties, yeah. So it's it's it, you know, the genre itself extends for quite a long time. I was just giving a quick heads up as to mm-hmm. what Southwest was, so yeah. and saying thank you because we had a nice crowd of people who were here and how much I enjoyed seeing all the paintings from last week and oh man. Well, and and if you think about it, it started with Remington when he was trying to capture what was left of the West. Oh yeah, right when he was trying to capture a dying culture, and a dying time in American history, and so he was trying to paint that really quick as it was vanishing. Very Which, extraordinary experience. Yeah. Okay, let's get in that next layer. All right. Next layer. So the next part we're going to be doing is a scumble, right? So there's a couple ways you can do this. I have some scumbling stenciling brushes here. They just have a nice bristle in them. And what I generally do with this type is I will get it wet, right? And then get the water out of it. And I do this to soften the bristles enough for this. Because they're such a short length out, they have to be softened. Right, and then I'm going to come here. Now I'm going to loosely mix my next color. So what that means is I don't worry about it being so even. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow and come get a little of my my white and smidge it right of my black, and I'm loosely mixing this darker color. See how it's not all one thing; it's kind of all crazy on the brush, and I'm going to just very very lightly make soft kind of little circular motions, right, is one way I can do this around my canvas. If I'm using a stencil brush, you could use a sponge and sponge this effect and you can use a bristle bright. When I run out of paint on this, I'll show you how you can do it with a bristle bright as well. Right? But see how I'm just smoothing this out and the rough texture of the brush is helping me age, age them, age them my paper. So say I did not have, where did I put, I put these aside? What did I do with them? What did you do with what? Not, oh, they're there, there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a bristle brush here. This is just a bright. And to get a rounder area, I'm going to work the corner of it. So I could do the same thing here. I get a little white, a uh, little yellow. I'm not going to dip this in water, right, because I'm trying to dry brush, get a little black. Again, it's incorporated loosely. So see how it is on the brush? Not smoothly, thoroughly mixed, but loosely. I could also be coming along here and if I have too much paint, you just wipe off the extras and do this and then work the corner. See how it does a similar thing? Mm -hmm. So there's never one way to get an effect done. And the reason I loosely mix this, see how more black kind of came out right there? This keeps me from being too perfect, too uniform. Whenever you're aging or creating a patina on something, you're definitely, definitely going to want to make sure that there's variance. So that's the loose mixture. You can always tap off, just make sure you don't have too much paint. And I'm going to leave a keyhole in the center of my painting. All right, so I'm just doing that. So that's how you do it if all you had was a bright. I'm gonna go back to my stencil though, cause I like that effect. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. That's okay. You can have preferential tools. That's right. But just don't ever feel like, oh, I don't have a tool. I can't do a project. Yeah, it's not. It's. it's, it's I could probably pull this also off with a crumpled up paper towel. Yes. Or so. with some Q-tips. <laughs> but, you, know. you just believe I can paint anything with well, Q-tips at this I'm, point. Sometimes I'm, John is challenging me, like, could you paint that with Q-tips? I'm like, I could paint anything with Q-tips. Give me a minute. And just guess how we ended up with so many Q-tip paintings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to flip this over for my comfort. But, you right. know, it's, it, 
you, different tools like, you know, I could build a house with a handsaw doesn't mean I want to. You know, but you might. But but then again, you were that this if, old house guy. You if, might be like, that's Give right. Me this handsaw and this weird rocky tool. I never understood any of the tools on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what's he gonna use? I don't know. So, I sometimes get pulled into home remodel marathon watches. So Sam just trying to leave this lighter area, this keyhole area. So yeah, that's in the, the center. You could be more yellow. You can be more cream. You can be more black. Any of these ranges will give you this aged effect. Right. This would also look really good against a barn wood background. So so you just do what you want to do. Is Ansel Adams uh, part of the Southwest Movement? I do believe he is. That's interesting. I would have to verify that. I think more of artists like Pena and Gorman and O'Keefe and Beatrice and... Uh, Beatrice the, Woods, you mean? Yeah, yeah, Beatrice Woods. All right, so when I have that and I'm happy with that, I'm going to come and get a little of my black. I'm going to actually get a little of my burnt sienna. Add a little of my yellow ochre to it. So see how that's loosely incorporated. A little bit of my burnt sienna. Woo, woo, woo. A little bit of my black. Woo, woo, woo. A little bit of my yellow ochre. And that's going to give me a nice dark corner color. So what I'm trying to do is create this effect where my corners seem almost kind of burnt or aged out. You've burnt your corners. I burnt it. We did that to some paper. You Looks wonder, much like, better if, painted. If Gordon Ramsay was teaching this, how would this class be? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we mm. haven't really had an angry Intense. painting teacher out there that like yelled at people. <laughs> at that, I don't. I feel like that's missing from the platform. I was just thinking that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> the mad painting teacher is missing. Arlie Ernie does painting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm just coming down the side. See how that just is a aging it and creating a little keyhole? It does. Just, you know, it can be a little more brown. It can be a little more black. You can work it as long, you know, just make yourself happy. No two times that you do this background will they be exactly alike. No two scumbles are ever the same. No two scumbles are the same. Of course, I say this as somebody who's, you know, not in general like an art forger, so. <laughs> Maybe art forgers everywhere are going, I can't believe she says that. <laughs> That's right. It's so easy to duplicate a scumble if you only knew the technique. <laughs> I'm sure there's some guy in jail just irked at me. All right. Are we enjoying this? We're just dusting this long. If you're using your bright, use your bright. If you're using a sponge, use your sponge. Using a paper towel, use your paper towel. You're just trying to create this sense of uneven, weathered background. Now, you're just using an old burlap canvas as a backdrop here. Yes, I am. Okay. I had this old burlap canvas back from my burlapping days. And I was like, gosh, that makes a nice backdrop for fall and for Southwest Art Week. Ooh. Isn't that nice? Isn't it nice? It is nice. Dun, 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 dun. You know, and you can move, you can, you can age things, like you can just age and move around, and so just have fun. Just feel like you, you know, can work this out as you see fit, age it as you see fit. I'm going to age a little more. It looks too youthful at the bottom. <laughs> it's too youthful. Again, not fooling anyone at Sotheby's, but making myself pretty darn happy. And that's the, why did that bug me so much? I don't know. Do you ever get hopped up on a part of your painting that is not consequential, but like, I have to fix it or cannot move on? I know that, I know that this makes it much more exciting for me to switch. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to rinse out my brush. <laughs> on the stencil brushes, I really try not to dip too far above the ferrule. How come? Um, even though these are double crimped down and everything, I find that this is a lot of oh. area. So oh, I just yeah. never want to get them soaked. Yeah. I have I have really not paid attention to that and not paid any price. But just generally. So just, I haven't ever paid a price for doing it. I just am trying to avoid doing it because I'm trying to set a better example. Now, as we have been all been telling the Sherpa, you should not leave your paint your paintbrushes in, in jars of water. I find, I'm just trying to set a better and better example. So I'm going like, Dun yeah, maybe not dispose of your paint water down the sink. It's super damaging. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you, we... Now use an evaporation bucket. 
<laughs> don't leave our paintbrushes in paint anymore. We're pretty, pretty, being pretty environmentally sound. Now to put this arrow in, right? I'm gonna chalk in with my ruler and my kids chalk. But of course I provided a free traceable, which you are welcome to use and no, it's not cheating. Norman Rockwell did transferring. Mm -hmm. Almost every single one of the master painters did it because the camera obscura. Mm -hmm. So I'm not cheating. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's a really good idea if you can mm -hmm. to learn to draw as you're going, just not in a way that stresses you out or makes you feel like you can't enjoy your creativity today. Yeah. So I'm going to come back several inches into the lighter area of my background and I'm going to just give myself a guiding line that points my arrow diagonally across the canvas. And I'm going to try to make sure that it's going to take me off my diagonal like this. So sometimes it helps me to get into my corner because I can get I can get off my angle. See? Mm. Some people are off their rocker. I'm off my angle. You're, I'm you're... off my angle, John. How will you ever stay married to me? I... I'm having a weird day. <laughs> this is the if the only I'm thing you have to worry about. I'm not doing still lives today. It's almost a celebration. <laughs> if all we have to do is is keep you off angle, then we're doing okay. Off angle, you can't even see it. Look, will yourself to see it. Okay. So the tip of the arrowhead is just a few inches long, right? So I want to give myself enough room for that. At least, for me, it's almost a whole palm. I'm going to say this is about, I could measure it with my ruler. I'm going to be so nice and be cool to the Europeans and say about seven centimeters. <laughs> Take that, Americans. All right, um, so I'm going to scallop out on both sides. Because I'm saying this is chipped stone, right? That's what I'm trying to imply that this is, is some chipped stone. And then I'm going to come out at the widest point at the base. So this is essentially a triangle with some scallops in it, but not the yummy kind you eat. These are the kind you would chip out of stone. And there's that. And I also want to give myself a branch. Now, my, my wood rod, I actually sort of freehand down because I think I like the look of it being Im a little imperfect. Though I imagine arrow makers probably were real specific about everything. <laughs> yeah, they had, there's there's some there's some arrow science there, for sure. This is this is kind of more gypsy arrow science, so <laughs> <laughs> not as much. And I'm going to mark where my stripes are going to be, and I'm also going to put some decorative elements down here, and I'm going to mark that. See, that nice? Mm -hmm. I'm going to paint this basis in before I start really getting my feathers to in there. You guys ready to do that? Yeah. All right, let's get a brush that we like, that we have a lot of control of. Let's get a nice number six bright. So this is from a new Art Sherpa line. But listen, all you're looking for is a firm filament that's synthetic, that's about a number six, that doesn't hold too much water. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and my Mars black, and I'm going to mix them together, right? This is making that Payne's gray. It's a very, very dark color. And I'm mixing it thoroughly. See how I'm coming together and mixing it thoroughly? You're mm -hmm. not seeing little globs of anything. It's just like mix, mix, mixed. And I'm going to paint this carefully inside my chalk lines. The edge of my brush, right? coming on this edge here. See, I'm swooping that. Yeah, that's just chalk you're using there. That's just chalk because as soon as my paint is dry, I can remove any of my chalk very easily with a just a damp brush. Get a little more black, incorporate that in. The reason I do a little bit of blue is so when I come and highlight this, it's going to feel like cold stone. It really is. It's the coolest thing. So it doesn't take a lot of highlights to make this seem more realistic. We just did a whole week of realism, so that should be exciting. <laughs> this is much faster realism. <laughs> so here I am just filling in the body of this. Just filling in the body. Depending on your paint company, mm -hmm. You may find that when you're painting black over something that you need one or two coats. Yeah. One 
one or two coats. I'm going to give my arrow a nice point. You know, because if you follow your arrow, you can never be lost. Yeah. Oh. I'm just working at my point here. Making sure I like it. You know, because this is, in my mind, made by hand by somebody. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I do a good job. Now, if you want to find out about... Uh, the, about about any of the brushes that you see here, mm -hmm. or brush cleaning or care, you can go to theartsherpa.com forward slash brushes, and you can find out all the information about these brushes that we're using, yeah. how to care for them, how to clean them. We have a whole, links of, a whole bunch of, uh, of reference material for you out there on that. Yeah, and just stuff just to how to care for brushes, and that mm -hmm. actually will apply for any brushes that you have. Yep. All brushes can be cleaned this way. Yes. All right, so I haven't rinsed off my brush. I kind of did this thing I call offloading, which is where I press the paint out. I went and got a little black and a little of my burnt sienna, and I'm loosely mixing it. And loosely mixing should leave it looking kind of marbled. See that? I'm going to pull across here and load a bead on my brush, which is this little roll. Let's see if the up-close camera can see it. Yeah, we can see that. And so when I'm painting Whoop. in my arrow, it should be a little bit streaky. Should give me a few different little colors, even though they may be all dark, right? I'm going to come across here, even though I'm going to be putting uh, lots of colorful things right here. I still want to paint it so that it seems very thorough. Come to the end to make sure this is nice. Very thorough indeed. I might come on the outside edge of this, even though I know. And it shows some wood between, so I'm going to load some more of my burnt sienna on here. Again, letting it be streaky. Loosely mixed. Rough texture is our friend. Roughness. 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 And we'll, we're going to let this rest for a second. I'm going to rinse out my brush, flicking it back and forth in the water. Wipe off with the towel and come put in some highlights. So I've offloaded there the color I had from before, which is my black and my phthalo blue. But now I'm going to add a little bead of white to it. See that? Mm -hmm. I like a little more. And again, this is loosely mixed now. I don't have a lot of water on my brush. I'm going to come up the center, tapping, tap, tap, tap on the edge of my brush. Center, tap, 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 tap. See how that makes a nice fine line? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to just lightly dry brush this highlight over there. See, I'm doing that all like loosely, yeah, painterly. My, my, I'm letting. When I say painterly, what I'm saying is I'm letting the media show. I'm showing the brush strokes. I'm not trying to hide how this was created by blending. I'm going to go right here. Add another little highlight on the inside. Okay. Maybe pull a little bit. So I'm just trying to create, let's go here, very lightly dry brushing. And again, down these edges. So see how that creates a little stone effect? I do. Feels like a chiseled dark stone, doesn't it? This is looking pretty good. Yeah. So it just needs one last little touch. I've got a little of my black, a lot of my burnt sienna and maybe a little of my yellow ochre and I'm gonna again loosely mix. Look how marbled that is. Wow. Let's just come here in my wood and drop on the edge. See I'm stroking back and forth on the edge of my brush. So the beads here and that way when the stroke is going back and forth it's just dropping a little bit of paint here and there, isn't it? Oh, yep. You're, 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 uh trying to keep up with you there. Okay, so no, let no, me see okay. if I can do it again. It's, it's no problem. I'm just, uh, this, is the, this is the part where you're moving around a lot. So I'm just yeah, having I to, tend to move quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you, but you let's, let's do it right here real slow. So see, I'm just stroking like this. And it is dropping some of the ochre, some of the burnt sienna, some of the black into the wood. And I'm keeping it predominantly oh. Oh, on oh, oh, the oh. left-hand side. Okay, you're, hold on. Now okay, I'm going to come down here and finish okay, it. Okay, I'm just going to keep that camera right there. So this is what I'm doing. Okay, go ahead. It's okay. Okay, now I'm going to come under the other side. I'm going to get a little black and a little burnt. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come to the bottom side of my arrowhead with this darker color and just finish off 
the stroke and you can see that there's the bead and it's making it look very woody doesn't it it does seems super woody there we go now rinse that out rinse 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 and I'm going to dry this area while I'm letting this dry I'm gonna put some of my low feathers in before I put my stripes in because there's feathers that go in front everybody's really excited about feathers are they? They're very excited. So see, this feather is pretty behind, isn't it? And this feather is behind. And so if you look at it like this, these two feathers are behind this feather. Uh -huh. This feather is even a little behind the arrow. Oh, yeah. This feather is in front of this feather. When I'm painting something and I'm looking at anything to paint, I need to look at this because it tells me when I have to paint it. Mm. So the thing that's furthest back here right now, I would have to put in now. I'm going to make sure I have clean water because that'll help my color stay bright. I'm going to do this in paint. You can do this in chalk, okay? But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little of my phthalo blue and my phthalo green and loosely mix them together in a smidge, a smidge of my CAD, okay? All right. When I have that, I'm gonna offload and I'm gonna come get some white. <gasps> so fun. See, it's all loosely mixed right there, and I'm offloading. See, I'm pressing out. I'm going to pull a little bead on my brush like that. Yeah. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this feather. It's going to come back about a half inch inch on the edge of my brush. I'm going to pull this down to a point, okay? When I've got that, I'm going to come from the side stroking down. See this curve stroke? I go stroke, stroke, stroke. This is why loosely mixed matters. See how there's streaks? Yeah. I'm going to go grab a little more white. It's okay if I pick up a little blue. Loosely mixed. As I approach the tip, I'm going to start taking the stroke forward Still letting it be lo loosely mixed and create a point. That's this side of the feather. Get a little bead of your white. I'm going to come this side. And I'm stroking the beads on the outside of my brush and I'm stroking it a curve outward motion. See? Mm -hmm. Loosely mixed, curved outward. Feather. It's all in. I know that's such a trip when you guys see that because you're like, is that feather? It totally is a feather. We it just looks really, I like it. Loosely mixed is the key to this. Mm -hmm. that's now we're going to do one right here, right? Because we got to get all these feathers in before we put in our flowers. So I really like, I really like my burnt sienna, but I want to make sure it's got a little black in it, right? And I'm going to have this loaded on a bead. I'm going to bring this just a little in front of this feather, but also outward, curving this outward. And I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to pull down on the bead. It's loosely mixed. If I need more black in my loose mix, I can get it. Just coming here, pulling this down. As I approach the tip, I can curve my stroke on the edge here and create the tip of the feather. Get a little more of your burnt, a little smidge of your cad, and come the opposite side. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Pushing that out. To a point. These are the basis of these feathers. This is all that's going on here. And while I'm at it, I can come kind of put the turkey feather that I have over here I can bring this back between my arrowhead and what's going to be my flowers and my stripe and sort of pull this out in a curved motion. I need to leave room for my black. Oh, yeah. So, see, I'm just on the edge of my brush. Now, I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'll leave that. I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre here on my brush now. Grab a little loosely mixed in a bead. 
going to come and this one is going to be more out. I'm going to need to grab more paint. Little bead of ochre, little bead of burnt sienna. See? And we'll take this, I'm going to leave this tip here, I'm going to come back an inch from my tip and just curve this out. Just playing this out. So see I'm coming to my line, pulling out. Let's be careful and do that on this side. We don't want to go. We can go over our uh, arrowhead or not. I'm choosing not to. Just a choice I have. So I'm going to stop my stroke at the arrowhead, even though a lot of this is going to be covered by flowers. I'm still just paying attention to that. And then I'm going to curve this out for this wider turkey feather. All right, turkey feathers are a really fun one to do. It's coming along. It's dry brush. See how a lot of the canvas is even showing through? Mm-hmm. Not worried about that yet. Yet. I just pulled a bead of my yellow ochre. Brush is still dirty. I'm just making sure I have the basis of the shape of my feather. I'm going to rinse my brush out. I've got a little of my Payne's Gray that I mixed, and I'm going to put just a dusting. See that? It's a dusting on mm -hmm. my brush. I'm going to get my white paint pulled out. And what I want to do here is I definitely, definitely want this to be more rounded. So now on the brush stroke, I'm going to be paying attention to that. See how I'm oh, pulling yeah. it out and then rounding it? Come the other side, pull it out, round it. The other thing, and you can grab a little ochre on this even though you have white on there, I'm going to come up incrementally along the feather, pulling out a light mark like a pattern. Offload if you get overwhelmed. I just did, so that's what I did. See how I'm making this pattern? Come the other side. So fun to make these feathers, isn't it? Yes, everybody is really enjoying this. Feather, feather, feather. This is very nice. Let's rinse out our brush. Rinsey rinse. And now I'm going to come and take a little of my black on the tip. I'm going to get a smidge of my brown. But on the, on the edge here, with a very light stroke, see what I'm doing? Giving them a little fluffy tip. tip. Floof. 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 Floofers are important floofs. That's how they keep warm, is the little floofy edges. Is that? Yeah. I'm, g I'm just tipping the edge of this feather, right? Those are not very aerodynamic tips. Those are those are like fluffy tips. Fluffy tips that keep warm. I like to add a couple of strokes of the black through here. See, I'm coming on the edge, the corner of my brush, mm -hmm. and pulling that out, just creating that pattern. And then I think it's okay to come down the center with your dark color and define that vein. There you go. I'm just working that out. That's a nice feather. It's getting there. You know, play with it. Come on the edge if you feel like there's some areas that feel rough. Like this. See how I'm doing now on the edge? Yeah. I'm just making sure it feels good. This is probably the more challenging. The dot feather is so easy. Mm. This is our most challenging feather of the project. Wipe off my brush, pick up some white. You've got to come put those little lines back. Oh, yeah. yeah. That really makes it pop. It does. Look, and then when I come back over the top, look, it's just a nice little feather. So that feels really good. That's very Turkish. That's very Turkish? Turkey-ish. Tur Turkey-ish feather? Turkey-ish feather. Is that a Turkey-ish feather? It is. What? I think I, I think we you you, you got you got to dance a little bit because because you, you, you got over three hundred people in the room. Did you know that? And yeah. we have little brushes painting with us. Little brush Jackie and Hi, Sophia, Jackie. or Sophie, and 
you know, uh, I, I, you know, I saw some little brushes here earlier. I think that there's some little brushes of North that were painting with us uh, that I saw. So I'm going to have to go scroll back up here. But thank you guys for all coming. We're over 300 people are hanging out today. So I just wanted to just let Cinnamon know because she doesn't get to see the chat. I don't. So we put a little bit of music on, a little bit of bubbles for her so that she gets to know. So we get to dance and celebrate a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to put a little paint together. I'm going to use my quinacridone magenta here. And I'm going to loosely mix this into my white. See mm -hmm. how that's making a nice pink? And along this bra along this kind of turquoise feather, sockle feather, I'm going to make some nice pink decorative marks. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. I like that actually quite a lot. And then I feel like I'm going to want a darker vein down it. Mm -hmm. Darker vein. So I'm going to take my phthalo turquoise. Phthalo turquoise. Put a little more white into it. But this time it's like one to one. One part phthalo turquoise, one part white. So the color is a little darker, see? Down the edge. Down the edge. How are we doing? Good. They are really enjoying these feathers. I think this is really, really cool. Rinsey, rinsey, rinsey. Now, you're using a bright right now? I'm just using a number six bright. Okay. If you're on a bigger canvas, you might step it up to an eight. If you're on a smaller canvas, you might step it down to a four. Just whatever is fitting your space comfortably is what you're going to want to do. I'm going to take my black and my brown again. And I'm going to come right here. I've loosely mixed them on the brush. I'm going to plant my brush on its edge and just drag it down on the edge and I'm going to lighten my stroke at the end. Rinse that out. And I think this feather could be even more colorful. So I'm rinsing, rinsing, rinsing out my brush. And I think I'm going to grab a little yellow and a smidge of my cad red light. They like the cotton candy feather. Or cad red medium, whichever cad it is. So I'm pulling this down. They like the cotton candy feather. They like the candy feather. Here. Yeah. I'm just painting some painting. I could painting. even get quinacridone on there. It's just, you're just adding some color. Right? Like somebody painted it. There we go. So that's super fun. Got that all in. Let's get our reds in. So here... I actually did this when I originally did it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take, interestingly enough, I think I'll take my magenta and my cadmium. And this is going to make a nice dark, but yet still bright orange. In the past, what we've done is phthalo blue and cad, but this time we're going to do this one to one. One part cad, the magenta, and one part the cad. See that color? Yeah. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to just right over the top of my wood. Look how bright that is. Wow. It's just gorgeous. And I'm going to take this back to, gosh, uh, I can look at it in the centimeters. So you guys know on mine, I've took it back about three and a half centimeters. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to do a similar band. Again, one part quinacridone, one part cad thoroughly mixed. See how that's sort of thoroughly mixed? Yeah. I'm going to make a similar set of bands across my wood here. So I'm going to imagine that this is wrapped or painted. I'm thinking wrapped when I'm painting this. So here we go. Now I'm going to pull this on the edge because I have two turquoise bands between this. So I'm going to make this red right here. Just make sure that that is painted smoothly with good coverage over the wood. Rinse that out. Rinse it out. Now, I'm going to do the last part with just my, my pure cadmium here. And let's add, I don't need to really paint that much forward because it's so much of it is covered by flowers. And they're really not going to let it peek through. So this is just the pure cadmium. I'm planting the edge of my bristles and just pulling down softly, creating this shadow. See that? And I'm going to do the same on these two streaks. Isn't that nice? Makes yeah. them pop. Rinse, rinse, rinse. 
This brush is going to rest to the side for just a second because I'm going to step my brush, step it down. I'm going to step my brush down into a smaller bright because it'll fit in the space. I'm going to dip it in water, dipping in water, dragging off the extra, and I'm going to mix one part phthalo blue to one part green, phthalo green. Get my turquoise, right? And add a little white, one part white. Offload by pressing out, get a bead on there. I come right here. Notice how this is like the space of my number two. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to smoothly paint this. And then right here, oh, oh, oh. Get up here. I'm going to come on the edge of my brush and make another little line. That's aqua. I'm going to come over and get a bead of white onto it. See the bead? Yeah. Oh, back down to the bottom. Hold on. Yeah, and I'm going to just lightly pull a highlight. That's it, just a little highlight. It's a nice touch, it'll make a difference later. Oh, we're doing so good. This is really good. This is looking really good. All right. Now, our number six bright has rested for a second. I'm yeah. sure it's feeling <laughs> lonely, traumatized, and my paint is skinning. I'm going to mist it. Say, one, two, three, mist factory. Mist Mystify. Mystify. That would have been so easy. Mystify. Just do. Just, just That's what marriage is for. You say some crazy things. Words. Your spouse is like, here's some words that There's you might need today. I some, met you. Some other words you might need. We write them down for you. <laughs> Pretty much. <gasps> so here is my well loved number six braid. I'm going to rinse it out because I see a lot of, of current pigment in there. Dry it out a little bit. And I'm going to get a little of my black and blue again. I may have over misted. Thus, the puddles, remember I said you don't want to swim? Mm -hmm. We're swimming. No, we're swimming. This would be swimming. You too made too much, much water. You made too much puddle. I made too much puddle. So I, I do want the blue black again, but I want it much more black, weirdly. Okay. This is mixed thoroughly, and I'm going to come pull my thinner polka dotty feather. Ready? Okay, yes. So I'm between these two, planting on my edge. Take this down. I'm going to take this just a little bit longer than the friends next to it. Okay, and I'm going to pull to the side like we'd been doing because that was fun, right? Now I'm going to actually step a break in my feather. So I'm going to come on the edge and sort of open that up like the feather had broken there. You know how they do? Where their little smoothness gets all broken? Yes, I do. So that's how I put that in there, and I'm going to start curving my stroke down to the fine point. Like you do, I'm going to load a nice bead of this thoroughly mixed color. Thoroughly mixed. Now it's okay if this feather crosses over my bow because we're going to have all these flowers on top. And I'm doing the same thing coming down. Just painting this nice. I love this thing when I put the, um, let's get a little more black. When I put the dots on it, it makes me so happy. Just make sure it's covered, right? We mm -hmm. want to cover the canvas and come down. Do both sides. For some, it might take two coats. That two is coats. okay. Don't stress about that. Now I can get a little white, which I found here, on the edge of my brush. And I can come down the center to create the rib, the, I guess this is the circulation for the feather. Mm. You know, and you can add, you can pull down just a few, just like you did there. What do you got? Highlights. All right? Just a few. Not a lot. Don't get crazy with this. Just some. I'm already getting crazy. Don't be crazy with <laughs> Just some. Too many, you're already crazy. <laughs> I'm already crazy. More of my black and my blue. My black and my um, blue, da ba dee ba ba da. Uh, do you just, any, any, any bright brush will work here? Any bright brush. Okay. The magic is not in the brush. The magic is in you. Everything Disney told you is true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to take that one a little bit longer than the brown feather next to it. This time I'm going to stop my brushing at the arrow because I want to imply that it's a little bit behind. I'm going to just pull this down. See how I'm 
pulling down and letting go, pulling down and letting go, mm-hmm. pulling down and letting go. Press, release, press, release, press, release to a nice little point. Load back up a bead here on the edge. Come here. How's everybody doing today? I'm just really painting like good. a choo-choo train today. They are. They are really excited that this is going in so well. That they really love the arrow. And just this whole, st- the feathers and everything on this has been really, really cool. I'm enjoying they, this week so much. They, they uh. This week has three one hoop paintings like this. Yeah. And three higher hoop paintings that they voted on. Because if they're going to make it be hard, I'm going to make them vote on it. <laughs> it's free will, man. So I'm just making sure I've got nice coverage. Now I'm pressing and releasing. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to get that. I'm going to take that advantage of that little bit of white there. Loosely mix that time. I'm going to come down the center. Implied highlight. Let's add some... Whether there it's a black cat or a black feather, there's just certain kinds of highlights you gotta you gotta have a little moment with, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, evaluate. This is a great time to evaluate and be like, do I need some more black paint here? Right? Come in on your edge and fill in some spots. Look at that. See, I'm just doing that. Yeah. Just flicking in. Evaluate your painting. Don't overwork it, but also know that if something is bugging you, fix <laughs> it. Shaz would like to know where the Vody thingy is. The Vody thingy is on the Facebook Art Sherpa page official, which for some reason we've started calling Taza. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it's uh, you can find it, we have we have we sometimes have them on our websites. Yes. On theartsherpa.com. Theartsherpa.com. We do polls there too. And there's generally links in the description to those. Yeah, and. Uh, on our pages, like so you'll see the link to our website, which you do have to sign in to see. We try to make sure you have links to everything we have going on. Yes. So you can kind of find stuff. I'm, it's not always true, but we do our best to make it true. Now, I am doing an interesting thing here, right? I'm taking this paint. This is fluid golden paint, right? Titanium white. But basically what this is is a soft body paint, whereas this paint holds its structure. This paint obviously self-levels out in a little puddle of ooh. <laughs> so I like this because the pigment load is so high, but guess what? Craft paint also does this. Yeah. So if it's just not in your budget, get the 59 cent bottle of craft paint. Mm-hmm. All right. But I do think it's worth it. So if it is in your budget, upgrade. Yes. So I'm going to do these little dots. I've loaded the tip of my number one brush. Yes. My number one, and I've dipped just the tip into the paint. Making little dots. And I'm making little dots. Now, what kind of these are? What kind of feathers are these? I don't know, man. But I saw them in a lot of reference photos. Here I am. I'm gonna come and dip in the paint. Dip. Cool black dotted. There's feathers. somewhere. There's a black dotted chicken. I found a <laughs> black a dotted cockatiel. <laughs> <laughs> you just you use the chicken feathers. Somewhere is a black dotted chicken. I looking for, I, but Google doesn't give me black dotted chicken. It kept giving me this cockatoo. Ooh. So I don't know what's going on. You found the carnival chicken that had you, the... Y'all may end up painting a black dotted cockatoo, though, because that's a really cool <laughs> word. <laughs> I'm just dotting these. See, I'm just touching the canvas with this, and some mm-hmm. of the dots are bigger and some are smaller. Isn't that nice? Dotted, dotted, dotted. Maybe they're, maybe they're from a chicken hawk. Chicken hawks are dotted? I don't know. Are you just saying uh, things? Uh, All right, it's the community. <laughs> it's the community knows. You don't know. Raven or crow feathers is the, is the guess. And then they dotted them with paint. Then, well, maybe the maybe they have under dotted feathers, that are I don't know. I you know I don't know. I just assume dotted chicken. <laughs> yeah. Just because of the house of draw hats, <laughs> that's the only reason why. Katie's little brush can't stop laughing thinking about a black dotted chicken. <laughs> Dude, don't doesn't everybody want one now? <laughs> and it should be like one of those fluffy chickens with the fluffy feet. With big fluffy head. God. Yeah, they I need don't, to have like a headdress. That's a pet. That's not dinner. I'll tell you that right now. And they and they have like little booties on their feet, so when they walk around, yes, they look like you're being chased. Yes, a fluffy chicken with a fluffy, fluffy head. Fluffy chicken. They're not very friendly. No. No, they're they're more like you're gonna look at me from very far away because I'm gonna run away because I'm a chicken. Probably because everything eats them. Isn't that enough fun? I love that. So decorative. So what I liked about this and why I incorporated it in this in design is I love the structure that the dots created in the design. Somehow I don't think you helped that chicken because it, now it tastes good and looks good. 
Really? Well, I mean, I don't think it tastes any less like chicken. It probably does. I bet there's barely any bird under all that fluff. <laughs> In my experience, at least when it comes to my, like, with my dog, underneath all the fur, there is no dog. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's just a wiry, little, shivery person. <laughs> <laughs> Twix is like Twix, Twix is non-existent so, without her fur. Yep. She may be happier oh, in the summer. So she may be more comfortable. The, the uh, she looks crazy though. Uh, guinea fowl. Oh, okay. Thanks. So See, I'm, the I'm, community knows. Yes, guinea hens. I guess guinea hens. I guess it's like like spelt like guinea pigs. G U I N I E Guinea. I was completely horrified by that when I learned that. I would have starved to death as a natural human. Because <laughs> <laughs> I would never have occurred to me to eat any of that stuff. I'd have been like those sad people on, you know, that out Ooh. in the weather naked show. So, where they uh, have no food, no clothes. It's just, why would you sign up for that? So Longwell Art says, Hi, Longwell. says uh, Cinnamon may have made a very good point. Some ceremonial feathers were, ma were hand-painted with certain effects. So this could have been, these could have been ceremonial feathers. It, it could have been. Sometimes when I'm doing stuff, I try not to do that because I don't know what is really important right. to communities. And so I try to do things that are decorative but not um, authentic. Right. Does that make sense? Thus the cotton candy feather. That's the cotton can. It it's bohemian, right? Which right? is, and that means artistic and offbeat. Offbeat. Now it, it's interesting because bohemian used to mean. I, I from bohemia. the polka dotted ones because I really felt that there was a polka dotted chicken. <laughs> if I am wrong, I apologize. I no, just no, no, believed in the polka dotted chicken so deeply. <laughs> I guess quail. There's a lot of downy woodpeckers, quails. Okay. All right, they've got some ideas. Yeah, I like okay. quail. Quails have owls, the... quails are, man, quails, puffins, owls, flamingos, and pink cockatoos. Quails have that funny little tuft of oh, feather on so the top of their head that makes, just like trying to always blow it out of the way of their face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slightly thinner paint. And so I'm actually going to spray my spray there so I don't even have to get my brush all where it, because sometimes I do this thing where I go dip, dip. But since I sprayed it out, I don't have to do that. I'm going to thin this. You can thin acrylic paint 30% by water in general, but do check the tube of paints instructions. I'm gonna add a little white to it here, like you do, with this number one brush. You can see I'm just loading it back on the tip. This is loosely mixed, mm. loosely mixed. Oh. And I'm gonna hold my canvas in such a way that I feel like I can make this nice line and this nice curve without difficulty. So I'm pressing right here where the red meets the arrow and I'm just dragging this out lightly trying to make uh i'm using my wrist actually to fulcrum my curve yeah we see, that's pretty cool right so then i got that one and this one is shorter than that one i, I think i got really excited with my blue and we get my white and my blue loaded on my brush like this see how it's all at the tip mm -hmm. i'm gonna come here and i'm just gonna go oh yeah that just makes your nice little feather or your uh, nice little uh it's a little flower flowers there Right, and I'm going to, if I need to pick up more white, I can, and I'm just keeping it on the tip. Oh, so somebody knows what the fuzzy chickens are called. What are the fuzzy chickens called? Silky bantams. Silky, you know who has chickens, like a lot of them? Hmm. The frugal crafter has chickens. <gasps> Lindsay has chickens? So many chickens! She, I've seen her paint a lot of chickens. See, I think she seems like somebody who would draw a hat. You know she what I mean? Can, like she would house and draw a hat. I love her watercolors. She does yeah, really good one. water coats. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just bragging. <laughs> I've seen. I think I've seen some of her community out here too, hanging out. There's uh, lots of people out here. Just painting, painting, painting. So I'm just bringing these back, right? You can see I'm just doing this. This is sort of one of those little highland grassy flowers. Kind of reminds me of like a a blue bonnet, ish. It, Ish, but they have these weird high grass flowers that are super colorful and they mm -hmm. go on these long things. And so I looked at all these different kinds and I said, I want a blue one. Now, Etrin was asking, if you used a sponge for the background, could you use a sponge yes. to get that same background? You could absolutely use a sponge or a crumpled up paper towel or even probably crumpled up cellophane. Yeah. You know, what you're trying to create is an uneven age texture. I scumbled it in. You could 
pounce it in. And that would be okay. So you see how I'm pulling back that stroke? Yeah. We'll go over that just one more time. So I'm loading my brush, right? My blue, my white, there's some water kind of misted already here. It's all on the tip. And I just press down with my brush and pull back. And I kind of curve them into each other. And I'm zippering them as we go down. Zippered. Zips! <laughs> You're getting really close to being done with this. Yeah. Zips! I'm now, so zipped! Yep. Zippies! Sorry, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is making me happy. I'm going to rinse, 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 rinse. I'm going to take advantage of this really cool mister. And... And I'm going to mist here so that I don't have to get as much water out. Controlling the mist. Controlling little, the mist. The pulse Contro misting. The pulse misting. And I'm loading my brush with this phthalo green, and I'm coming over and I'm loosely mixing into my cad yellow. Right? And I might grab a tip. See there? Yeah. All loosely mixed, isn't it? Yep. So let's make some, some other stuff here. I'm going to make this little green sprig coming down. Very similar stroke. Ooh. Green sprig. So press, pull, press, pull, press, pull, press, and pull. Let's get some darker green this time. So I'm getting more into my darker green. See that? Little brush Brooke has joined us to paint this too. Hi, Brooke. How are you doing? It's always good to see our little brushes. So I'm pressing this one down. Same kind of little sprig of green. See what I'm doing? I can come back over. So two little sprigs of green. Two sprigs. Two little sprigs of green. I'm going to get some yellow and green on here. And I'm going to say that there's sort of a little curve out a little bit. See how those are? I go yeah. press, curve out, press, curve out. Just a little implication. Let's imply some green like that over here. All right, I'm going to get a little white on the tip into this yellow. On the see how that is? I'll just a hot mess on the tip. And I'm just pressing these little green leaves out. Where else would we have a little green kind of coming up? So just a little bit here. See curve press. Mm -hmm. Curve press. That's all I'm doing. Now Fun stuff. I'm going to let this rest at the side and I'm going to get my small bright again. How are you guys doing? Doing very good. Oh, it's so pretty. Thanks. It's already getting there. It is. It's, it's really, far really nice. excited about it. I like I'm, it. I'm loving it. It's I'm looking for my small bright. There you the are. Small bright. I love you so much. So this is it. I'm my number two. And I'm going to get a little of my quinacridone over to my phthalo boom. Mix them together. There's a little hair. They're going to make a purple. See that purple? Add some white to it. All right there. Mm. And I'm going to come here with this hot mess load. So this is loaded on the tip, loosely mixed. And I'm just going to pull that out. Wow. All right. That's that little bit. If I'm worried that it's too dark, I can always come with my white and my red. And pull it up. Whatever I want to do. Next part, this all needs to be dry. Mm-hmm. Dry, 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 dry. So dry it with your hair dryer. Talk to John for a minute. Talk to me. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Hey, guys. This is really funny. So what I didn't realize is that because I have, see, I got the bubble music on the background and rotation. So now if I can turn this up and I give her bubbles, then it messes with her while she's doing her drying because the bubbles just sort of quickly overwhelm her. So while, <laughs> while we're doing that, I'll let her play with some bubbles. And thank you guys for coming because it's been really exciting to have you guys all here and hanging out with us. And of course, I love, love, love to see all your paintings. And uh, it's been really nice because this last week we had a bunch of still lifes that went up and all of those got shared up on, on Facebook and on our website. And those were really exciting to see. So I'm looking forward to seeing all what comes this week from Southwest Week. Um, as you can tell, I'm not really the talky-talky one who goes out in front of people, but there she nope, is. Still. Nope, she's still painting. Ha! She plays with me, so I thought she was getting ready to wind up. So no, but guess apparently not. I just have to give her more bubbles. So 
Yeah. Yeah. So paint up your uh. uh so, okay. Now she's done. I'm back. Okay. I'm back. You just messing with me I'm now. Back. I am. I'm messing with you. you see, I'm I I, I have to I have to figure out what I'm gonna right. say, and then when I figure it out, then you're like, I'm done. It's all good. And I'm like, but wait, I just thought of something to say. <laughs> all right, let's paint in our like little. They're kind of like a dogwood blossom almost that I put here. They are. Now, did you have any ideas? There was there there were some folks here that were wondering. You know, if, if we didn't want to paint flowers, what could we paint on there? Um, you know, what I would definitely say is search, um, Bohemian art and, mm -hmm. um, uh, see what pulls up. Maybe like a turtle shell. Or, yeah. Like, you know, or, or, I mean, or whatever. Seashells. Or shell would be natural. so pretty. Yeah, yeah. A seashell would have been gorgeous. That now I'm all sat into a seashell. Well, the shoe, they were just asking like if you had, if you were doing it for a boy or a dad and you didn't want to put flowers on it. I would not put the pink feathers in there. <laughs> <laughs> would definitely, if I was doing it um, more rustic, then I might think of beads or kind of things that are more elemental. Or I actually, I probably would have steampunked it and put gears in a watch clock or something crazy. So it's funny because uh, <laughs> I'm white. I brought a little of yellow of my white, but I got too much on there because I want this to be mostly white. Rakesh was asking if the bubbles were real. The bubbles are so real, Rakesh, and I love them. All right, so I'm going to paint a nice round flower petal. Isn't that nice and round? Yeah. And it needs a little round flower petal friend. So I'm going to paint another little round. Oh, see? It wasn't dry. I told ya. <laughs> there. So you. What it is is paint will dry on the surface and yeah, not be dry skin. deep if it's, yeah, if it's, if it's thick. And we're in, and we're in, we're not in a, in a. In so a, I'll show you how I'm going to fix that. I'm going to finish it out. We're not like in a hurry, but we don't have a lot of time for dry time in here. So because we got we're doing this all live, so she kind of sometimes just. Well, no, I thought it was dry. What? Sometimes you really, really will believe it's dry. I'm yeah. just doing these little circles, overlaying each other as we go around. All right. I'm gonna dry this. Mm hmm. And actually, I painted out so much of my purple. I'm gonna come back and get my pink and purple again, right here, which was right there. Yeah. And just make sure that that is peeking out in some way because I liked it but I'm gonna dry this with the hair dryer now okay because that's not okay and that flower needs to be white and that's all hot mess all right. so all right now there's a couple questions that came up here that I'm gonna scroll back up and see oh right uh, so Isaac was asking isn't there a chance of getting soap bubbles into the painting and causing an issue well, yes, there probably is a, a slight chance of there being, well, actually, there's more than a slight chance of those bubbles getting in there. They do every once in a while. And uh, that glycerin can affect, uh, the glycerin could affect the, the paint, and it yep. could have an impact on it. But because we use a relatively small amount of it, and uh, it just is sort that of on the surface. this time. We're I'm going to take advantage to my little boo-boo and not paint... This too far down, I'm gonna let the darkness of the center kind of be part of the flower. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. So you're gonna use that as part of the shading. I'm like, dude, now it's part of it. Now it's part of it. No, they were asking if we were concerned about the little bit of glycerin from the bubbles being in the painting. It's such a minuscule amount, and I mean, people do like honestly. Sometimes people will use glycerin uh, for all kinds of effects in painting. And other than, I'm gonna get a little bit of pink on my brush here. That just being... come around my petal edges a little bit. Just a little smidge. I want this to be sort of pulling out a little dark in the center there. Now I'm looking at it. See this? Yeah. Um, so unless you're using it in large amounts, like if it's just popping on your painting, you should be okay. We don't suggest it, but it's probably no. not going to hurt anything. Nothing, yeah. Nothing's going to Though, we were doing the black light bubbles for a while, and those did. Oh, yeah. Black light bubbles have uh, you know, a I'm fluorescing agent I added a them. little purple there, and I'm going to come back with a little white. This is just to help this pop maybe a little bit and have a little dimensionality next to its much brighter friend. Why do you use a hair dryer to paint, uh, Josie was asking. To paint or to dry? To dry. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be waiting here way too long. <laughs> That'd be a whole different show. Use a hair dryer to paint with. <laughs> I'm going to use a little of my uh, quinacridone, a little of my cad to make this next color. I'm going to get my white over here. There, see that fun? Yeah. It's a totally different crazy pink color. Um, because it just speeds it up, and as long as I don't put the heat on too high, 
and I'm careful with it, it's it's not harmful at all in any way to my painting. If I were to cook it, I wouldn't want to use a heat gun on my acrylic because all acrylic is affected by temperature in some degree. But it's right? just the air moving over it that speeds up the yeah, process. Yeah, if it's cold, the molecules get together and they get tighter and they can get rigid. And if it gets really hot, they can get really soft. Yeah. So you just you, what you're trying to do is dry it without baking it. <laughs> But a hair dryer in general won't mess with you that much. Right. You just keep it on the low heat setting and just... Whoosh. So I'm going to put a petal right here. These two flowers are overlaid over each other. They're over each other. So I'm going to try to make sure that this one feels like it's over its friend. I may turn my canvas to get good petal positioning. Good petal. What I'm looking for is good petal positioning, man. Premium petal position. And I'm just painting these little teardrop straight shapes, right? I mean, yep. we've all kind of done these flowers in our life when we're doodling. Right? But just sometimes a doodle is actually based in something pretty good and pretty real. Like blossoms. Hmm. So I'm going to make another little petal doodle. My petal doodle can come right here. And by turning my canvas, I can always be working to my strength. Uh -huh. And also, it helps me keep an even spacing of my petals, if that's something that I want to make sure that I have. So remember I said that a lot of it was just going to be peeking out? I do, yeah. Yeah, well, there it is. So once I have that in, I'm going to get my darker mixture of the two. And I'm going to follow my little pattern. And just kind of darken the edges of my blossom. Because that looked nice. You know, darkening the edges of the blossom. I'm going to dip my brush in water. I'm going to swirl it around to improve the flow. The flow, the flow. All right, so here we go. We're just making sure that our little focal blossom looks really nice. Now I can take a little of my white and a little yellow and just make sure that I'm a little more white. So much yellow, too much yellow. Just kind of brushing this out, right? It's looking really cool. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And when I write this, and you took these 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 feathers. I think that purple went up too far, so I'm gonna get a little white and knock that back. I took these feathers what? You took these feathers a bit farther than you did in the original. I did? Yeah, they got they got they're more complex. I didn't know they were more complex. You can see the layers. Probably just did them better. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was that, that under purple shading that you did by accident. Yeah. That added that 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 extra bit of layering in there. Because in the other one they're more yellow. In the center, and this one they're more purpley, giving it more shade. So I'm just trying to make that my flower in the center is pretty, and I can see all my petals, and it feels very pink and what I like. But again, you might be doing a shell here because that's a really great idea. Now there's a little yellow in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my magenta and a little of my thalo blue. I'm going to make my purple, and the center of this I'm going to just dab on the corner of my brush this little purple center. See that? Oh yeah. I'll have to have a little purple center. Do, 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 do. Happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. That just turned out nice. Do, do. And then I'm going to get a little of my yellow. Just my yellow. You can even get a little cad orange if you, cad, you know, the cad red if you want. Yeah. Just loosely mixed, see? Loosely mixed. I'm going to tap, tap, tap. Isn't that fun? Yeah. yeah it just makes it, doesn't it? That turned out nice. I'm going to just... Focal the yellow there in the center. There we go. Oh, yeah. And that, my friends. Look at that. That turned out amazing. Did it? Yeah. I That's really so good. Like I don't that. know why I always ask it as a question. Like, I don't know when I'm not here and I'm just like it's some so visitor much, in no, my it, own studio. It turned out really good. I, it's really I awesome. I would love to show you how to sign it. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes definitely. So I just want to say that one of the things that I always kind of mention when I'm signing paintings, right, because there's so much hoopla around signing. I'm going to sign it in kind of an aqua today because I'm going to sign down here under the arrow. Oh, good. 
And so one of the things I'll say is that think about your uh, painting when you're signing it. Remember that your signature is part of the composition. And so, you know, be aware of it. Don't just slap a name on there in a date. Definitely be like, hey, where can I put this? Where can this blend in and not be disruptive? Yeah. You know, because you want to add, not subtract. So see, that's a light turquoise, and it kind of flo goes yeah. the whole thing. And it just fits right in there. Just goes right in there. Wow. If you follow your arrow, you're never going to be lost. I can't wait to see these from everybody. I have loved seeing all the stuff from last week. I love, I can't wait to see more of these arrows. Southwest week, all week through Saturday. So come back every day tomorrow. We're going to paint a buffalo. Oh, wow. So I want to see you at the easel really soon doing that. Paint a buffalo. Mm -hmm. Or something else that I might have. You might be still on lemons going, oh, I love this lemon. <laughs> Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll see you with the easel really soon. Bye-bye.